My guest today is uh, Joy Quartin. She's a conflict management practitioner with the Yukon government. I'm your host, Mark Franklin of Career Cycles. So, Joy, you just did a talk on respectful workplaces. What, what's the problem? What is the disrespectful workplace, that, the problems that we're trying to solve? Right. Well, if you have any kind of a workplace with people who have uh, different approaches, different styles, um, different goals, uh, eventually you're going to have conflict. And if that conflict doesn't get resolved, often that leads to some kind of disrespectful behavior. And so in response, there's something called respectful workplace and respectful workplace policy. What is that? Well, the Yukon government um, has decided that rather than use sort of the old harassment investigation process, they developed a, a policy and a, and a process called the respectful workplace policy that sort of describes what a respectful workplace looks like and defines um, different processes for dealing with situations where there's conflict and disrespectful behavior and also what um, the different parties' roles are, what HR's role is, what the union's role is. So, yeah. And it was interesting, you talked about appropriate dispute resolution. I have actually heard the AN ADR's alternative. So it sounds like you have an, a, a process for appropriate dispute resolution. What, what are the steps that you take or what do you do when you go into an organization? Right. Um, well, first of all, we have to sort of figure out what's going on. So part of it is, is sort of zeroing in on what is the problem that is causing conflict or disrespectful behavior. So that may be interpersonal conflict, or it may be that someone is really unaware of their behavior and that it's impacting their coworkers. Um, or it may be that a culture has developed <coughs> excuse me, in a workplace that is really negative and is impacting people and making it not a pleasant place to work. So in response to that, is it a, a, a large-scale intervention with a big group of people? Do you do one-on-ones? What, what are the different tools to implement this? Right. So we do um, all the way from just a person who comes in and says, I've got a situation I want to deal with and I'd like to try and deal with it myself. So we'll provide them with some coaching to do that. Um, if they don't think they can deal with it themselves, we may contact the other person and invite them in, do some coaching with both people, and then bring them together for a facilitated conversation. Or if it's a whole workplace, we may go in and interview everyone and ask them what's working well, what's not working well, and what needs to change to make it better, and sort of from that elicit enough information to figure out what needs to happen. And sometimes it's, you know, everybody needs to change their attitude and do things different. Sometimes it's one person or maybe two people who's really impacting the whole group. Tricky. So it just depends. Mm -hmm. So those three questions you just said, uh, it's mm -hmm. really interesting. What's working well, what's not working well, and what needs to change? Is there an example um, of a workplace where, where you maybe one of these larger scale situations where you had to ask those three questions? What was the problem and, and then what happened? So often there's a number of things that need to happen following a workplace assessment. Uh, often our starting point is to put everybody through our standard workshop, which is um, learning their obligations um, under the policy, for one thing, but also learning sort of some self-awareness stuff. You know, how are you dealing with things? Uh, what might your impact be? How might you be in misinterpreting your coworkers' uh, actions? Um, so, so often everybody just needs that as a foundation. And then maybe there's some coaching that a couple people need. Maybe there's some facilitated conversations that need to clear the air between a couple or um, several employees. And sometimes we do kind of a circle process where we put everybody in a circle and we give everyone a chance to speak and we kind of address the hard issues. So it really depends and often there's a number of things after a workplace assessment that needs to happen. Um, you talked about uh, sometimes people need the skills and confidence to resolve their own con conflicts, and maybe they don't have that mm -hmm. at the beginning. What are those skills that people need to develop to, to eventually be able to resolve conflicts on their own? Right. Well, um, first of all, they need to stop pointing the finger at the other person. So that's a lot of, it's a lot of self-awareness. It's um, recognizing that the impact a person's behavior is having on you may not be what they intend. It's also looking at your own contribution. Um, it's learning, uh, we use a tool called fact and story. You know, what's, what are the facts and what's the story you're creating around that? Uh, and then it's learning to communicate that, being clear about what is fact and what is story. And story is assumptions, conclusions, emotions, you know, the things that aren't necessarily the absolute truth, but they're your truth. And how do you communicate that with the other person? 
And as people get clearer about that and start looking at themselves, which is the only thing they have control over, uh, and that get and get some tools for communicating it clearly, then they're more able to be confident that that conversation is going to go well. Because I think people are often afraid of a big confrontation and of making a mess of it and things getting worse. And so when, the clearer they get and the more self-aware they get, then the more confidence they have to tackle those difficult situations themselves. Right on. Thanks so much for telling us about this, uh, Joy Quarton. I'm your host, Mark Franklin, here on the Your Workplace interviews from Career Cycles. Thank you. Awesome.